Hi everyone. This video is going to be a short example of the process of composing a fourth species counterpoint above a cantus firmus. So to watch this video, you should already be familiar with some of the basic rules of fourth species counterpoint about striving for suspensions, about the distribution of consonants and dissonance, you know, consonants on the weak beat, dissonances on the strong beat resolving as suspensions, um, and otherwise having consonances on the strong beats as well. So I'm just going to walk through the process that I go through to compose a fourth species counterpoint as a demo for theory students. So I've chosen uh, a cantus firmus here that works well for fourth species. The first thing I'm going to do is simply play through it at the piano. This uh, cantus firmus is in C major, and it simply goes So there's lots of descending motion, which we love in fourth species because we want to write uh, as many suspensions as we can. We like to chain them together and almost let the example write itself. At the outset, though, I'll draw your attention to the way this example begins. If you begin with a descending step in the cantus firmus, this C to B, it's actually best to begin your example on the fifth rather than the octave. So I'll actually want to write a half rest here and a G, which I'll tie over to the next bar. Here I have a fifth and here I have a sixth. And that's to avoid the temptation to either break the species right at the outset, which you don't want to do, or the, the possibility of falling into parallel octaves. If I were to write an octave here, this seems like it's going to set me up for a nice 9-8 suspension, but that would be parallel octaves on this weak beat and this weak beat. So whenever you see a cantus firmus that begins with a downward step, it's always best to start at the fifth. What I'm going to do is look ahead now I want to find some sort of a consonance that is going to set me up to have some a descending chain of suspensions that begins here over this G through F and E. So what I need to do is find a note that's going to be consonant here on this weak beat and is then going to set up a 4 to 3 or a 7 to 6 or potentially a 9 to 8 suspension here. I want to avoid the 9 8 though because I can't use that continually. The goal here is find either 4-3 or 7-6 that I can then repeat, repeat, repeat as the step goes down. So what I want to do is look ahead to G here to see if I can set up a chain of suspensions. And it's actually quite difficult in this case. Because if I look at the potential suspensions over G. We could have C resolving down to B, which would be a 4 going to 3, but C is not going to be consonant with B, so I can't write it here and set up my suspension. If I want a 7 to 6 suspension, I could write F here, but that would actually be dissonant with B as well because of the tritone. So what I'm actually faced with is the fact that I'm going to have to break the species right here at the outset. Um, so for instance, I might write I might leap down to a D or leap up to a D. leap up to a D, I've got a tenth, that then becomes a fifth, 
and then I want to set up some sort of a chain of suspensions here. So for instance, I could, I could write E which is going to be a 6, then it's going to become 7, resolve down I can then resolve it again D over E is a seventh that resolves down to C. If I hold this over, this will now become a tenth, which means it's consonant, and I'm now free to leap away to some other passage. Let's have a listen to this quickly. So that's where I am on the 10th. If I take stock of this counterpoint, I feel a little iffy about this leap from G up to D and the way that it continues up to E. A lot of people in fourth species will relax the rules of leaping just a little bit, but it still sounds a little strange to my ears. At the same time, we're going to run into range issues if we were to choose to leap down from G to B. So perhaps I would bump my opening note up an octave, if nobody's actually going to sing this example, um, to treat the leap in a slightly better way. That's something we can perhaps come back to if we want to refine this counterpoint example. Continuing on from C over A, this tenth, we're now free to leap to an interval that is going to set us up for another chain of suspensions. So since we're already on the tenth, we can't really repeat that note, which is what would set us up for 4-3, four, 4-3, three, four, three, four, three. So instead, we're going to go ahead and leap to the sixth of this, which means we're going to leap up to F. So we go upward here. This is going to set us up with 6 over A, and it's going to set in motion the kind of chain of suspensions that we really like to see in fourth species counterpoint. Continue on. want to end a fourth species example or really any counterpoint example with this six that expands into an octave at the end. So there we have it. Because the cantus firmus uh, has so much descending motion in it, you know, this G, F, E, and then this very long A, G, F, E, D, C, it's very easy. In this case, the example kind of writes itself except for some of the decisions that you have to make early on. Um, as I said, I might choose to write uh, a higher D or a higher G up here. I might write that instead of this. In fact, I think I will go ahead and do this since I'm just going to play this example on the piano. I'll take this now to the piano and play it and then sign off.